hello viewers uh, in this video i am going to uh, tell you that how you can apply finite element method so called fem to non linear boundary condition so i'll start with a very uh, basic equation in which i have taken as a simple example in which uh, second order uh, non linear differential equation i have chosen with this type of boundary condition since we know that the solution of this is ex so i'm going to Uh, find out the solutions with uh, with the FEM. So I quickly go through the FEM because I am going to implement this FEM co uh, FEM uh, with the MATLAB. So in this first lecture, I am just uh, give you the glimpse of the FEM so that you can easily understand uh, the what the FEM is. So FEM contains uh, this five steps. First is discretization of the domain. It means that this domain which is from zero to one. is divided into finite number of pieces it can be a uniform or non uniform so for the simplicity i in this video i am just taken the uniform uh, pieces or can uniform meshes for finite element method uh, next uh, we can uh, uh, choose any element uh, within this mesh and uh, derive the element equation so this is important because uh, for you can this element equation is applicable to every element and uh, after calculating the derivation for the element equation uh, you can assemble this all the equation and find out the uh, complete assemble matrix uh, for this uh, differential equation and finally this boundary conditions which is uh, for this particular example is taken as one initially at 0 and 1 uh, which is equal to e at 1 so i we can impose this boundary condition i can uh, find out the solutions and finally you get the value of u at specified number of before i go to uh, this uh, finite element method i firstly tell you that what is the weighted residual method because since we are going to apply this weighted residual method because there are other methods like rayleigh ridge and other methods are also variational methods are available i am going to use the weighted residual method so what is the weighted residual method since if this is the differential equation of any type with second order differential equation i have chosen if y is hx is the approximate solution of this one then if you substitute hx you can replace y with hx you can see that since h is not the exact solution for this differential equation so it will give you non zero uh, error which you call error or you can say that residual so what is your aim the aim is that to in order to minimize this residual so method is called weighted residual you have to multiply this residual with some weight and in the entire domain since the problem is uh, from 0 to l length is on 0 to l you can just integrate from 0 to l now in the weighted sense you are making it zero rather than uh, taking directly residual as a zero so this uh, value of weight is dependent upon uh, the different types of method if you using subdomain method then you can use direct delta function uh, at x uh, minus x it means that x i equal to uh, x equal to x i it will give you 1 and otherwise it will give you 0 the collocation method the value is 1 you can choose to different points on the domain and accordingly you can put it to 0 and you can finally get the solution similarly least square this weight is taken as the derivative of this residual and last one is the glerken in which the, the this weight function is same as the shape function of this uh, residual so i am using this glerken method because it's uh, simple to use so what is the complete definitions of the glerken method glerken finite element method since this is the application of Uh, element wise uh, glerken method you are going to apply element wise the glerken method on the entire domain so what is called the strong form strong form is basically your differential equation you just go on integrating it uh, by multiply it some weight so which is called the weak form then you can apply the glerken approximation method and finally the matrix form is generated which you can solve by any technique gauss elimination lu decomposition or gauss seidel whatever you wish to use you can uh, find the solution of this matrix form
so uh, i am just giving the example of glycan method to which uh, i have chosen a simple equation so that i can uh, easily make you understand this method uh, so what is the glycan method in this method if this type of differential equation is there this is d square minus 1x equal to uh, 0 uh, d square minus x equal to 0 this is cf and pi you can calculate you get this exact solution if you wish to find the Glerkin uh, method uh, solution with this, so what are you going to choose? You can guess us uh, a trial solution in which C1, Phi1, C2, Phi2, two shear functions are cho chosen, Phi1 and Phi2. Since this is your guess, so what is the uh, uh, value of Phi1 and Phi2 is? You have to choose uh, the value in such a way that it will satisfy this boundary condition because this boundary condition is uh, your essential, it's not derivative boundary condition. You just see that when x is equal to 0, the uh is also 0. Similarly, this is 0. And for x equal to 1, you can see that this value is also 1. So you can take x, x minus 1 or square or q, whatever you wish to want. So this is, I think, the minimal uh, type of say function and you can even use the more c1, c2, c3, c4 and whatever you wish in order to attain the more accuracy. So I have chosen only uh, uh, c1, c2, two constants which I wish to calculate in order to get approximate solution using this method. So what do you wish to do? UH is there. Now you have to uh, take the derivative twice. You get this uh, this value 2c1, 6x minus 2c2 and minus x. It will give you the residual. So what Glerkin method is that you are integrating with some weight function and then this is earlier I have explained to you yet. This weight function is same as the phi1 and phi2. In case of Glerkin, you can use this phi1 and phi2. Put it here phi1 and phi2 and integrate with 0 to 1. You get these two equations and finally if you solve this with this equation by any method, you get this type of exact solution. And you can see that this is your final solution because if you substitute the values here and simplify it, you get this type of solution. And you can see that the exact solution and the approximate solution is the same here. So this is the uh, way when the, your equation is simple, you can get even the exact solution also with the Glerkin method. So next, I am going to use now the file, find element by since uh, it is the application of uh, Glerkin method element wise. So I am going to uh, apply in each element uh, this Glerkin method. So better is to find the generalized uh, expression for uh, this for element so that you can apply it to all the elements. So I, for the sake of simplicity, I have to choose only the five sub intervals means five pieces, yeah, five elements you can say that. And the length of sub interval is chosen is uh, since total length is 1, you can divide it by 5, you will get 0 0.2 is the length of each interval, which is the uniformly distributed. So I have chosen 1, E1, E2 mean element number 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So this is your piecewise discretization of the domain, which is the step 1 for the finite element method. Now step 2 is implementation of the or finding of the derivation of the equations using any method. So I am going to use the Glerkin which I already explained you. But in that I have chosen the entire length but now I am going to calculate for any element. So I have chosen Xe or Xe plus 1 is the element length. Generalized Xe, Xe. You can, if E is 1, you can see that your first length. If E is 2, your second and so on and so forth all. So this is uh, your equation because I am going to solve this, this equation. First equation. This is your first equation with the method find double method so what is the final method you just integrate it integrate by parts you know that and uh, take the the bilinear part bilinear means to uh, different functions product of two function in one side and if you have a single function single w or u you can take into the another side since boundary condition row here so this is basically called the scandry or the natural boundary conditions or cut the derivative boundary conditions so you can use the value directly so u is called the primary boundary conditions. Finally, you get, you can write this type of values in terms of derivatives. To calculate that, which type of uh, element equation I can use. The standard way is to uh, notice that you can either use a linear, quadratic or any type of the shape functions. 
so this is the standard format ue is u1 u2 same as the glaricin for their glaricin you are using you can see that you are using this type of functions in the glaricin this c1 c2 phi2 here the you are using the same type but you have to keep one thing in uh, clear that this should be uh, should satisfy some properties what is the property here property is that at x is equal to x is a psi 1 should be 1 and for the another psi x is equal to x e plus 1 psi 2 should be 1 so this is called the partition of unity property it should satisfy so so you can see that for the psi 1 you can uh, have this equation this is the shape function value this is for the each element so it's x e plus 1 minus x upon x e plus 1 minus x e you can see check that when x is equal to x e it will cancel out will give you value 1 if x is equal to x e plus 1 it will give you value 0 so this is the property of uh, the psi 1 and similarly psi 2 so which is easily calculated by this derivation this is very simple and similarly for the quadratic also so I am using only the linear shape functions so you can see that what is the basic idea behind this linear approximation since your solution is u1 is here u2 is here and you are you are if you are linearly approximating uh, you will get this type of line here but actual solution is this maybe this or any type so this is this difference is basically error so idea is that if you go on decreasing the size of he so this difference is almost negligible so you can just go on decreasing the size of he and with this you can easily apply the final element method to any problem so this is the finally your two elements is here you can use it and finally i am going to substitute you can see that here going to substitute for the u this type of expression in the u and substitute u here and for uh, w you can use psi1 and for the second case you can use psi2 so two type of equations now formed and finally you can see that if you uh, find common the u1 u2 similarly here u1 u2 everywhere you can see that this type of format is formed by uh, uh, finding the derivation of equation so this is uh, called the stiffness equation and this is for the right hand side uh, equation in which you can get kij this is the general expression for all these four ki's this actually 2 cross 2 matrix is k e you can see that the terms can be calculated from here you just go on multiplying you can see that you can calculate this type of expression here where u is basically the nonlinear here so i put u bar here because you have to take u as a known quantity in order to execute the find element method because it can only uh, solve directly the linear equations so find uh, i is 1 if j is 2 you can directly use the uh, say functions and calculate it you can get this type of fixed values in every time and finally for the right hand side this type of property continuity of uh, primary variable should be there so if the solution by this should be equal to the solution of this so thus this type of uh, global numbering you have to give uh, no doubt uh, if there is no external forces the values by q1 q2 is zero otherwise the value is the same that which amount of force is applied so now we go on assembling you have the calculated the value for the one element so similarly you are going assembling the all the elements so in the diagonally this is the tridiagonal matrix form for the first element this value is calculated you can see that u1 u2 is this this is k12 and for the second you are going adding value here so for this the value is added similarly for the third element fourth element and fifth element so this is the diagonal uh, you can say that diagonal entries are formed with the addition of only this one two three four entries so because the uh, two cross two element of first is is merged on one cross one element of second so similarly this type of format is formed now you can apply the bonding condition just after putting the bonding condition you can see that you just replace this value by one and put the exact solution replace this value 1 and put the new exist value of this is basically 1 this is e and then according to since your equation is nonlinear, so you have to choose the specific value of ui 
and then you can calculate this matrix by any method any method means gauss elimination or you can say that lu decomposition so after doing this you can get the solution and since uh, since nonlinearity in order to handle nonlinearity you have to run this code again and again when this ui comes with a desired accuracy of 0 0.005 so this this is all you can extend this idea to two dimensional because uh, handling two dimensional directly is somehow difficult but once you are able to understand uh, for one dimensional modeling then similarly you can go for two dimensional and three dimensional so this is the way you can learn uh, using uh, MATLAB for this fine element method. So thank you. This is uh, all about uh, handling fine element method. And in the next video, I'm going to make a code for you so that you can easily understand uh, that how you can make a FM code, which is not easily available uh, in the MATLAB. So thank you. Thank you very much.